Hi everyone, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy. And today I want to talk about monitoring the breath at the belly versus monitoring the breath at the ribs. Is one better than the other? Might there be a time where either one could be appropriate? Let's check it out. Before we jump in, I want to quickly ask that if you get value out of my content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Also, if you'd like to dive deeper with your studies, or you're just curious to connect with me, please check out my totally free Breath Basics 6-Day Challenge, my deep dive into functional breathing called the 4-Week Breath Boot Camp, my private online Be Light community, which all of my YouTube subscribers get a free 30-day trial to, and my free functional breathing PDF. You can find all of those links at the top of the video description, so make sure you check them out. Okay, so you're breathing and you're wondering, how are my breathing mechanics right now? Why might you be wondering that? Because while your diaphragm is your primary muscle of respiration and it does have to move in order for you to breathe, just like any other muscle in the body, it can get adhesions, it can get stuck in certain spots, it can have limited range of motion, or it can outright be moving completely dysfunctionally. And what happens when one part of the anatomy is dysfunctional for too long? It can start to impact the entire system, right? In this case, a poorly functioning diaphragm can lead to muscle stiffness and fascial restrictions throughout the entire torso, poor balance and coordination, a higher risk of injury, digestive issues, reproductive issues, poor blood flow, poor venous return, poor lymphatic movement, poor quality sleep, low energy, and a high stress response, among many other things. Your breathing pattern is no joke. So how can we monitor what's going on? And how can we maybe cue our diaphragms to start moving a little bit more functionally? I want to divide this video into two sections. In this first section, I want to talk about breathing in a supine position. That means lying flat on your back. Okay, so here I am on my back in a supine position. And so I always recommend if you're gonna breathe on your back, it's really nice to either actively bend your knees and plant your feet into the surface beneath you, or if this is not relaxing for you, go ahead and take some pillows and stuff them underneath the knees so that you can absolutely let your legs relax. I always recommend this position because what does it do? It allows the spine to take a more neutral posture, so it really relaxes the low back. And then more importantly, it really relaxes the abdominal wall. So now my diaphragm has the best chance of moving freely, with ease, with very little resistance, so I can get that full range of motion through my diaphragm. So when we're lying in supine like this, where should we be monitoring the breath? We're going to monitor at the belly. Specifically, I think you'll find the most movement between the belly button and the ribs. So you can just place one or both hands right on that upper abdomen, right under the rib cage here, a little bit above or even a little bit on the belly button. I'm not using a lot of pressure, I'm just using my hand so that I can feel what my breath is doing. So as you inhale through your nose with your lips closed, you want to feel the hand gently rising towards the ceiling, and then as you exhale, through the nose. You want to feel your belly dropping toward the earth. I'm going to breathe four times in a row for you now without talking so that you can just take a moment to observe the belly. Here we go.
So there you go, monitoring the belly while breathing in a supine position. In the second section, I want to talk about breathing in a seated or standing position. Well, why would that be different? Because your diaphragm is not only your primary muscle of respiration, it's also a postural muscle. And it's a main muscle involved with core activation and stabilization. You can think of your diaphragm as sort of the upper lid of your core. And it works in synergy with your low back muscles, your pelvic floor, and your abdominal muscles to help create balance, coordination, stabilization, and more functional movement patterns. So as soon as you come into a seated or standing position, your diaphragm is still responsible for breathing, but now it also has this extra job of helping to keep you upright and also coordinate your movements. That means that in this position, it's not going to be that effective anymore to be monitoring at the belly. You're not going to get that big, easy, relaxed inflation of the abdomen that you got when you were lying down when you're in a seated or standing position. So what can you monitor for instead? In this case, we're going to monitor at the lower ribs. Okay, so now I'm in a seated position and my diaphragm has to activate a little bit in order to help me stabilize my core. So in this position, I'm not gonna get that nice big belly expansion. So what are we going to monitor instead in this position? In this case, we're going to monitor at the lower ribs instead. So if you're following along, go ahead and place your hands, fingers in the front, thumbs in the back, right on those lower ribs. And you're gonna place them there with a little bit of gentle inward pressure. So I'm giving a little bit of resistance to my rib cage so that my brain and my ribs can say, oh, okay, you want me to breathe here. You want me to expand here. So my hands are giving a little biofeedback so that my body knows where to breathe. So now as I inhale through my nose with my lips closed, I'm allowing my ribs to gently push my hands out to the sides. And then as I gently exhale through my nose with lips closed, I'm allowing my hands to win, right? My hands are gently guiding my rib cage back to their starting position. So this is a really good indication of diaphragmatic activation when the ribs are gently expanding and deflating with each inhale and exhale. I'm gonna do a few breaths for you now without talking so that you can just observe what the ribs are doing in a seated position. Okay, so that's how you monitor the rib cage in a seated and even in a standing posture. Now, of course, you can go much deeper with this topic, but I think this is a really good Breathing Mechanics 101 video and just a nice place to start. I invite you to incorporate these principles into your current breath practice. When you're practicing your breathing lying down in a supine position, can you monitor at your belly? And when you're doing your breath practice in a seated or standing position, can you monitor instead at the lower ribs? I hope that this will help you to feel improved diaphragmatic activation and that it will help to move you one step closer to truly functional breathing and optimal health. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel for more great videos like this one. Also, remember to check out my totally free Breath Basics 6-Day Challenge, my 4-Week Breath Boot Camp, 
my private online Be Light community, and my free functional breathing PDF. And if you'd like to donate to my channel, you may do so by visiting my Buy Me a Coffee page. I also want to take a moment to thank all of my existing donors. Your support really means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.